Hello everyone and welcome to another IndieX 2020 showcase and today we're going to be showing off Oirbo from Imagination Overflow and we are very glad to have with us here Diogo Cardoso, the main developer for Oirbo and Edward York, the artist for uh, Oirbo as well. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hi guys. Everyone okay? Hey, how's it going everyone? Nice. So, um, for all those who don't know, IndieX 2020 is an international uh, indie showcase. This, day, this edition is going to be digital, usually we have a physical event. But uh, mainly what we are doing is just taking lots of indies from all over the world, showcasing them for everyone and giving them a chance to have a spotlight shown on them because there's a lot of indie games out there that people don't know and that a lot of amazing work. And we hope that when you come to our streams, you discover things that maybe will turn into some of your favorite games ever. That's always our goal with our these showcases. So, Diogo, for people who are not familiar with Oerbo, can you give us like uh, some elevator pitch on what the game is? Yeah, yeah. The Oirbo is in a, an intense platforming adventure set in a web editing world. Uh, basically, uh, the game takes part in uh, a spacecraft where you have to uh, you have to basically um, explore the, the entire spacecraft using a, a tiny robot, and you have to uncover the mystery that. Uh, uh, the whole space uh, that underwent on the spacecraft in order to progress uh, in the game. And as you go, you will find uh, a lot of island mysteries and island sections that you can play. But in the end, the game is, is um, a fun and fast paced platforming game. Okay, seems nice. That's, that's, I, I think people are here to see your game, even though it's always interesting to ask some questions, and I'll be, of course, asking some questions along the game. And everyone who is watching at home, please feel free to leave questions in chat. We'll read them later, and we'll see if what, what Edward and Diogo have to say about them. Uh, but for now, I think the most important thing is going straight into the game, so without more, any more delays, let's just get to it and show off Oirbo. So here we got a very nice, very nice splash screen, initial screen, with... <laughs> Uh, since we have the artist here, I think we can also ask, like, did the, the color choice for this initial menu um, try to come out with something special? Like, did you pay special attention to the, the colors of the game? Yeah, the original color scheme idea for Orbo was actually blue and pink. Mm. So you see the robot that you've just spawned at, the, uh, the yeah, that guy, he has a blue face. So we wanted it to be that everything blue was friendly um, and on your on your side. When it's pink, it's not anymore. Oh, okay. So it just uh, it's like a sort of a law secret that we've got going on now. Yes, he's turned blue, so he's sort of treating you as a friend. But when you leave, no, he's back to the the evil AI. Okay, nice. That's a, that's a good detail. That's already like contextual storytelling right in the beginning of the game. Nice. So, yeah, that's all this game is about. It's it's all about contextual storytelling and um, sort of visually communicating the messages that we want to tell. Um, and that's because in the entire game, even the menus, the main menu, nothing has a line of text. Oh, good. So good. it's all communicated through visual icons and colors and animations and things like that. So it makes my job really interesting. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I mean, there's a, a lot of games out there who, who try to do that. It's not an easy job for sure. One of the most success, successful examples of that, I think, is Hyperlight Drifter. Like, it's a, a really good game with very little dialogue. And I, I think there's actually, like, yeah. not even any dialogue, and it's mostly pictures-based. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it successfully tells a story. And it's a, a fine craft. Uh, it's, it's not easy to pull off, but usually when you do, you, you come out with something interesting and unique on the side. Because, uh, yeah, it's... oh. Oh no! <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's one thing you have to learn about Oerbo is don't be afraid to die. You are going to die uh, often, but most of the times it's really fair. It's not not actually like you don't feel like the game is cheating you. But go ahead. Yeah, we Edward. put the word intense in our uh, in our elevator pitch because it, it really is quite difficult. So we Death do content. expect some balancing here and there, but we that's more the main goals is to make it really challenging. We know people okay. like a good challenge, so exactly. So 
how long have you started the development of this game? Yeah, so we started developing the game in 2018. So um, uh, it already made the past the two years mark. Mm -hmm. Of course, since we are also working on other side projects and other uh, basically making uh, working enough to make ends meet. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, the, 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 the game is constantly being delayed. But right now we are really focusing on finishing it up and releasing it on the next year, hopefully in the first trimester. Uh, in the worst case scenario on the second one. So we'll see how it goes. But so far we finally have our process and uh, we, we started to work really good together in the past few months since uh, we all, you, all, you, Eddie, you entered like what, one year and a half ago, yeah. right? To the team. So yeah, almost two years that we work together now. <laughs> so nice. oh, I understand. things are, are going very smooth now. And yeah, we bounce off each other really well. So it's going really well. So did you, when you started development uh, on Oerbo, um how did you feel? Like what prompted you to, to go with this highly intense, uh, challenging game? Play? Uh, whoa, good. So uh, at first, the uh, what I really wanted to make is uh, I, I, I was I just finished playing all night, mm -hmm. and at the same time I started playing Ori. I don't recall now if it was Ori first or all night second, and I, I really fell in love with the the genre. Uh, and then as I started to study the the Metroidvania genre and how the world building works, I discovered that when I was a child. I played Metroid and uh, some Castlevania, not much, but, and the, basically all the whoop came, came back and I just said to me, uh, my first game, my biggest game so far, Star Wars Interface was a rogue game. So mm -hmm. there pretty much isn't any level design on it. So why not embrace a new challenge and go forward with um, something more complex and something more like a game that I used to play when uh, I was younger. Yeah, that that's a good, that's a very good inspiration. Metroid is certainly an amazing game, and yeah, you can see the level design is an integral part, and uh, world in interconnectivity is an integral part of both uh, Hollow Knight and Metroid. So uh, you can definitely see some kind of inspiration here for this for this game. Oh, oh, oh. let's. Hmm. How can I get through this man? Mm, okay. <laughs> Oh, a bit too soon, but I get it. Yeah, so it's a bit unfair because this area that you are playing now that we have on the demo mm -hmm. is actually the second area. So you pretty pretty good jumped the tutorial area. Yeah, yeah, uh, you need to, to. So it's it's a bit more difficult to to go through. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So when when you start the development, did you already have? A solid idea of, of what you wanted to make in the in, in initial stages? Did the idea grow along to the, the development or did you already have a kind of defined scope for the game? Yeah, <laughs> this was supposed to be a three month game uh, <laughs> regarding development. Uh, but when oh, Edward nice. came in, the scope just enlarged so much the, his ideas just made the game so much better uh, and i couldn't simply say no to a good idea and basically we have voyable now a giant game uh that something that i wanted to do uh, initially was to make like a, an, an hour or two okay. of gameplay now is at least uh, three to four hours uh, just this area from the data that we have collected and you you can kill those enemies if you touch their uh, white part. Mm, okay, you... good, good. Thank you very much. So you don't need to to waste <laughs> that. Yeah, I don't need to dash dashing with against them. them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Let's see. Yeah. I think continuing <laughs> what Diego was saying about development as well. Um, yeah, we started out with a very, very limited game. Um, not in a bad way. Just it was meant to be a very short project, and we both just 
keep coming up with ideas that neither of us can say no to. Um, and that just sort of turns into this big, long project of what ideas do we turn down and what ideas do we sort of go, okay, yeah, that deserves time to develop it. But yes, yeah, it's hard working when there's people like Diogo coming up with ideas every day. We both work every day on this and we both talk about it constantly. So yeah, it's hard to turn stuff down. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. So it's just the two of you working on the game? Yeah, that's right. Okay, good. Uh, did you know Did you know each other before the, the project started? No, uh, Diogo actually put a post up on Reddit, which I replied to. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I hadn't worked on a video. This is my first video game. I've never done anything with video games before. So um, I think about two months before I saw Diogo's post on Reddit, I'd uh, quit my job um, to be an artist, like you do. <laughs> and, exactly. uh, yeah, and I saw Diogo's post, and uh, yeah, so it was a great, great opportunity. So yeah, we just met through this project. Okay, awesome. This, oh, it's good to see. Oh, let me check this. Oh, okay, this is way too soon for me right now. It's good when when discovering new people turns out to be like actually a good collaborative team to work. Uh, not it's not that common that you yeah. find people that with which you can resonate, let's say, and and actually develop your skills. But that's awesome. I mean, so how how has it been like working for the first time in game development, Edward? Yeah, it's been a steep learning curve. <clears throat> so I hadn't actually even opened Unity before this project, um, which was an interesting experience, sort of going from uh, painting on an iPad to yeah, using proper game development tools and, uh, and things like that. So it's a very steep learning curve. But mm -hmm. Diogo is also a teacher. So he's got that edge of being able to teach me oh, there, yeah, um, in a heavy. way that works. Yeah, so he's a really good teacher. So he's taught me everything <laughs> I know about developing a game, which has been very handy. So do, do you guys have any funny stories to share uh, about the development? You can be funny, sad, happy, whatever. I bet like when, when developing uh, a real relationship for the first time and, and one of teacher and also student, but at the same time co-workers, that, that's, brought, <laughs> that's sure to bring up some, some funny stories maybe. Uh, for me, I don't know about a funny story, but it's been maybe heartwarming, uh, sort of learning how uh, a coder works and his workflows and uh, and taking that over to my side of things, which is all painting and art and stuff. Um, and that's been a really fun experience is learning how the brain of a coder works, um, because I definitely think people like me, like creative RT RT types, definitely need a bit of structure and a bit of sort of more mechanical thinking about things. So that's been fun. Okay, that's good. And how about you, Diogo? Do you have any... Yeah. We, we, we don't have... I don't think we have that... Uh, uh, at least right now, a particular story, uh, a funny story. What I do have is um, the amount of um, knowledge and growth that Edward is having since the beginning of the project. Uh, for someone that didn't know and doesn't know much about coding and game over overall, uh, it's now to a point that he already teach me stuff about Unity. Oh, so nice. we keep, we'll, yeah, it, it's it's really funny. Um, uh, a good example is the the part of the animations. Yeah, of course. Sure. Uh, I, I knew a little bit about uh, animating uh, stuff on Unity, not particularly. Um, making character and animations or anything, or anything like, that, like that. And Edward simply saw a plugin for rigged animations with Bones and started using it. And now you, we use it because he just started to play with it and go go forward with it. Yeah. So it's a yeah. give and take relationship definitely regarding knowledge. So we... It's funny, some of these enemies now are actually animated with sprites, so like old school sprite animation, mm -hmm. and some of them are animated with bones. bones we have yeah. such a mix of technology, so uh, that's just a, a testament to yeah, us deciding halfway through to change things for the better. Okay. So it's definitely a young game still. 
I mean, yeah, basically, but also, it, <laughs> game games are kind of like similar to magic because there's like a, a let's say a, 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 a layer of illusion uh, that players don't usually see right uh, the, you 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 don't need to make everything work the right way you just need to make it work if it works it's okay right so I mean mixing bones and sprite based animation can be something that maybe you think ah maybe we shouldn't be doing this but if the end product is is something that is working and is attractive I mean it's the like it's it's okay, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We haven't noticed it initially. Oh. Hey, nice one you made. Yeah, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was challenging to say. Oh, okay, I understand this. Okay, okay, okay. I died. That was so close. <laughs> no, that, the, luckily I'm very patient with with these kind of games. I'm I'm not like a a raging gamer at all. It's like I just try, 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 try. Don't don't have much. Yeah, okay. test. You have a platform on the right, so you can go. Sorry? Oh, no, uh, the, the stream is a bit delayed, so I, I was ah, giving okay. a comment, but... Yeah, you can uh, watch on Discord. You, f you finally get it. I'm streaming, streaming it to you as well, I guess. So I think you can watch, like, the live feed. Okay, uh, good. Oh, no. Okay, good. So... Yeah, there's a bit of a learning curve with Orbo. Yeah, definitely. of course. <laughs> but I mean, there's there's a, most games have a, a learning curve. Some is just a little bit steeper than others, and it's also something you can go and balance. Uh, but as you said, like you you both had to learn a lot during this project. What was like one piece of of th th those kind of learning missions that you um, that you enjoyed the most? Like what has been the most challenging, but also like the most rewarding thing you've learned with this project. For me, um, yeah, definitely working in a team. It's I know it sounds sort of sort of soppy and fundamental, but um, it's crazy how much um, chatting with one other person can do for like a creative thing like this. Uh, working by yourself, um, yeah, it's great for you know getting stuff done. But sometimes having someone else to sort of have a different perspective on things is really interesting. Yeah. I think for me, that's been the most rewarding part of all this. The having someone to bounce off, right? Yeah, yeah that's it. And how, what about uh, Diogo? Do you have something to that you enjoyed learning, and or 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 was it mostly like, oh God, I have to learn this thing, new thing. I don't know what to do. What? How was your has been your experience with the game? Uh, I'm more a technical guy, so uh, this game is was simply a huge. Uh, learning experience for me. I want a bunch of new stuff uh, regarding so much about special level on game design. I think I have re read like four books <laughs> since I I started making this game just on web on game design. And um, I learned a lot. I started making AI enemies. So if you get to that that part, you will see some of our first enemies uh, we, that, you, that, that actually use uh, enemy AI. And for me, uh, being a uh, technical guy, learning more and more is just, is just my cup of tea and I, I can be happy if I'm learning something new every day, which uh, simply produces something new to learn every day. Even today, uh, we learn new stuff not regarding to something uh, game, game related, but learning for me is my way of life, and uh, if I can do this forever, I will continue to do this forever, definitely. Yeah, I mean, of course, you can't, you can't be a game dev and not like expect to, to have to learn and relearn and be, keep adjusting because tools just advance so f so fast nowadays. Oh, good. That you really need to. Yeah, here's the AI. Bees, not the bees. Mm -hmm. This is the furthest I've been. Oh no no no! Let's check it. Hmm. <laughs> There's always some a sense of dread yeah, in, the... at the horizon. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Don't touch them. They won't like it. Let's check. What's up? Don't oh, touch robot. the bees. Uh, fix me? Yes. Good. Good. Yeah. So check. <laughs> this is a checkpoint, right? 
Yeah. Oh, good. Awesome. Gross. So, but another part for us learning was uh, the parallax backgrounds. Uh, this area is a really good example of yeah, it, here. where the backgrounds move at different speeds, and that was a game changer. That was really crazy for us to to learn about and use. It gets used everywhere. Like every room, I try and put some parallax in there to really sell. Yeah, it's, it's a nice touch. Adds depth to the world. Hmm. Mm. So. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. Oh no. Maybe. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ooh. this is getting feisty. Yeah, you annoyed them. Oh, 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 oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Let me just get out of your hair. You, you don't, you don't, you don't need me here. Obviously, I can just do this and then do this and then do this and then do this. Just gotta keep moving. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so now we go here. Let's go. Oh. So this year has been very different. Like be normally people like right now we would be preparing to to meet uh, at at uh, Shizel Games World and you would be preparing a physical booth uh, that you would be having to to show everyone. But this year of course has been a very different. Like have you found that the lack of physical events as as made it any harder for you the lack of feedback probably or did you adapt just fine to to the different uh, how working from home and everything else how how did you fare this year oh, no. uh yeah for me it's not been much of a change um yeah i work from home all day every day anyway so luckily that's been pretty okay for me um we, as a really super small team, also can't really attend many physical events anyway. Mm -hmm. So don't actually think anything has changed for us, quite honestly. What do you think, Diogo? Yeah, yeah, I have the, the exact same opinion. Uh, actually, for me, the, the, the whole pandemic even uh, freed me up more time that I, that I didn't have before. Okay. So uh, it, it's an unfortunate event, but in, our, in my case, that I also work full time from home. And right now, I'm, my classes are, are also online. So I'm pretty much uh, the same. And even I, I even gain a little bit of time because I don't need to go with public transports or something like that. So nice. Yeah, for, for you, the situation has been awesome then. Yeah, because that's a, a really big discussion in this year. And I, of course, we, we have to try to get like the silver linings out of the situation, right? And if this pandemic helps people realize that like work from home can be very productive and can actually help a lot of people, right? Then that would be already a, a very good uh, positive, in net positive in my opinion. Because particularly in Portugal, there is, there's a lot of uh, stigma associated with um, work from home, right? So yeah, it's 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 good that this this pandemic has enabled you to maybe try some different things, like have more time for yourselves, produce the different things. So yeah, it's good because some people really miss the. We had a lot of streams here, right? And some people have noted that they usually love the the feedback they get at events, and that they, it's been uh, like one of the most important things that they've lost this year. But I'm glad you you guys are are figuring it out. Okay. Let me check here. Yeah, we're always on the hunt for feedback as well. So uh, do let us know if you sort of find anything. Yeah, of course. No, for now, it seems to be <laughs> everything working as it should. Good. If you guys had like all of the resources that you wanted and the time and the whatever, what what would be your let's say project dream project uh, for each of you? So uh, for me personally, um, definitely uh, a, a huge space sim with everything that w one could imagine. <laughs> like Star uh, I was a big. 
Yeah, exactly like Star Citizen, yes. Uh, I was a big uh, freelancer gamer back in the day, uh, before internet, so I have, I still have my little notebook with all the systems and all the hidden places of the weapons and the ships. And if I have unlimited resources, I will do not something like a bit out of scope. And you, Edward, what would you... And you, Edward, what would you... Your mic's cut off, Diego. Your Sorry, mic's cut off, Diego. Sorry, Ben. Okay, seems like we're having some sound like issues some... right now. Oh. I have to check. But, uh, Edward, but uh, Edward, what would be your dream project? And it can—it doesn't project. need to be necessarily it dreams. It can be like books or movies or what, some just some a project that would, you would like to do if you had uh, the resources and and time for it. Books. Yeah, I think for me, I'm writing a like a graphic novel in my spare time, and it's like a sci-fi things set in the future um and it's like a dystopian future with ai and negative things like sorry diogo your mic is like yeah. giving me feedback <laughs> and i can't i can't even hear my words <laughs> let's check because he might have i don't know disconnected i don't know let's check no he's still there but mm, maybe he can't hear us he'll be I'm chatting with him on this on Discord, so he yeah. should be. Back. Seems like he. Yeah, just for me, um, I'm writing a, a short story called Pinnacle. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a sci-fi sci 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 novel. Oh. Um, and it's set in a future after the singularity has occurred, so when AI and technology have merged together to form some sort of super being that we can't possibly compete against. Yeah. Um, and it's it's sort of based on that. I really don't know how the game would look, though. Um, I, I always flicker between, like, Dark Souls with guns <laughs> or an isometric game like Diablo, because um, those are two of my favorite series. I love, like, Gothic art, so Diablo and Dark Souls are definitely Have my two tried, biggest uh, um, dreams. Remnant, remnant of the, I uh, remnant from the ashes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Because that's yeah, kind that's, of similar. Not. Yeah. It's more. It's got like elements of Binding of Isaac in there as well mm -hmm. as Dark as uh, uh, Diablo, because it's got like the randomization element. Okay, Diogo's disconnected, so he's just going to get back soon. <laughs> okay, well, we can just keep on going on. And... Yeah. yeah. So Edward... It's really fun watching someone else play the game. Yeah, yeah, it's good, and it's good for feedback as well. That's that's what we want to do, we want to show yeah. people the game and entice them. Oh, and uh, I, th I don't think I mentioned this yet, but there uh, there is a, a, de a demo on Steam that people want, if they want, they can go and try it out right now. So, yeah, you, inst yeah. you can just... Uh, look it up, Oribo on Steam, and it should be pop right up. Uh, yeah, so give it a try. Oh no, okay, okay. Here okay. Go. <laughs> Are you back? Can you guys hear me now? No. Yes, we can hear you. Exactly, okay. we have Diogo back. I, awesome. I had I had to change the the hardware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things happen all the yep. time. Don't worry. Sorry. So it was a smooth technical error. Yeah, exactly. We just kept going, kept marching on. Okay, good. So, for me, I can go here and let's do it. So, uh, Edward, regarding the the art style for this game, is it something that you were already kind of familiar with? You'd already went for this kind of futuristic, like robotic, but kind of bio uh, vibe as well, or was it something that you just really wanted to do, and it fit well with the project? Yeah. The, it the art style is not what I usually do, so I am predominantly do like Dungeons & Dragons character designs. Yeah, That's my job, essentially. So it's all very fantasy art and swords and magic and things. But I absolutely love sci-fi. Um, my job before I was a, an artist was all technical. I worked in like a nanotechnology research thing. Mm -hmm. So sci-fi is like my bread and butter. I love it. Um, so I really was desperate to do some sci-fi design. Um, 
being the only artist meant it sort of had to be cartoony. I couldn't go too realistic with it, otherwise it would never get released. Exactly. So it's like a compromise between really wanting to do high detail sci-fi design where I know how every object works. Like if you ask me how these bees work, I could sit down and explain it to you. No. Um, like if you were to build one. But uh, it's also got like that sort of cute, maybe chibi element because of all bow and mm. um, yeah, like more of a cartoony style. And that was again an organic development. It happened simply because I had to learn how to do this as as I did it. And also, uh, yeah, like the tools and stuff that we've got just sort of helped develop this into the style it is. Yeah, and I mean, your since your work was mostly fantasy related, but you have this passion for the the sci-fi aspect. Maybe you can even bring something unique to the table, right? You make something that's of course sci-fi yeah. and grounded in sci-fi, but you always have those uh, like inspirations you can uh, summon back from from the time you did fantasy work. So maybe you can bring something. Yeah, I think the giant that. flowers here. Yeah, okay. are like an, a, an homage to that. A lot of my work sometimes involves like oversized plants. <laughs> so this area, this whole area, is like the the greenhouse for the spaceship. You'll learn why as you unravel the story, but the spaceship has a giant greenhouse aboard where we are now. And uh, yeah, so I wanted it to look like the plants had sort of taken over and maybe a little bit of a magical element in there with the plants being too big for themselves. Oh, no. <laughs> maybe, maybe I can do it. Okay, good. Yeah, nice. Those scythe enemies drove yeah, me mad doing the testing. Okay, let's. Oh yes, grass. Oh, checkpoint. <laughs> yes, this is actually sizable, a sizable demo. I had no idea it was this big, because I kept dying. So, but it, it's yeah. actually like a lot of content. Okay, it's cool. an entire area. So. Oh yes. Oh, secret or no secret? No secret. You gotta hit the button. Yeah, not hit not for now. Maybe later. Hmm. No. You got the right idea there. Yeah, I just wanted to. See me. Come here, please. Hmm. Come back here. Oh, throw it. Throw it. Ah, oh, I need to do even ah, almost further. Come on, come on, come on. See me. See me, you fat something. Okay, good. Ah, yes. Oh, oh, oh. oh no. Oh, no. Oh, okay, good. Hmm. Yeah, you get a bit of momentum when yeah. you get flung up in the air. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, good. Nice. Ah, that was nice. Oh, the, this game is actually also reminding me, not uh, not so much, of course, the the... the the Hollow Knight inspiration is the, the one that I it seems to me more clear for me, but it's also reminding me of uh, Guacamole because it has a lot of um, verticality in terms of uh, the, the design space. Oh, little, let's go. Oh, almost. Yeah, Diogo's really stepped up his level design game. I don't know if you want to talk about that, Diogo. Yeah, yeah, feel free. Anything you want yeah. to share? Uh, yeah, the the main goal of this area is exactly that: is uh, being an open space for the the player. Uh, the first area is a bit cluttered, so you feel a bit engaged in in the why why you play. But as as the progress game, you will be more open and has more verticality, and you don't you don't feel such enclosed. But on the next area that we just finished developing, you, the feeling is, is, is exactly the opposite. The idea is to make the player feel engaged uh, and like he can't go out um, trying to run from it as much as, he, uh, as, as possible. And that is basically what we do every time we start a new area, is decide what is the team and what we want the player to feel. Oh boy! Uh, and oh boy! Basically, is that uh, at least the the pros and the the, oh. the experts? <laughs> that almost was not there, good. almost there. Yeah. You were actually trying the the first puzzle, the, the first puzzle, the the puzzle, the big puzzle that we have. No, but this the, is good because 
you are introducing like new mechanics at every turn so that the player doesn't get bored because the beginning was very just mechanical right and was just more like about figuring out that you can kill enemies and um, use their orbs let's say to kind of activate things but now we are using the the enemy's attacks as a, a way to activate things so that's Let's see. Yeah, we follow a very strict sort of teach, learn, and te and challenge um, protocol okay. where we teach the player every trick and thing that they'll need in quite a welcoming way, and then we turn up the heat almost immediately so that you really have to work to figure out how to use yeah. what we've just taught you. Yeah, but it's it's working because it's it gets to be quite challenging, but it's stimulating because as soon as you understand, particularly if you're a quick learner, as soon as you understand the mechanics, um, you kind of immediately get uh, challenged. So it's not it's not boring, right? Okay, let's go. Yeah, that 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 is the one of the arm goals while doing the the levels and the the old areas is to make first ensure that the player understands uh, what is expected from them. And then uh, simply apply that knowledge uh, with a, a gradual increase on difficulty, like you, like you saw in in, the, in this in this area where, in this section where you are. So you are already understanding the basic mechanics. Now you are playing with them with the challenge that we have left behind for you to try. <laughs> Yeah, you're looking way more confident now. Okay. No matter how much I tested this area, the scythe enemy got me almost every time. It's it's a simple AI, but it just doesn't quite click with my brain. Yeah, because you're trying to rush it, and um, you really need to like see what he's doing and like try to. Take your time a little bit. Mm -hmm. Patience is not the skill that I have with games. <laughs> yeah, and, and this one was nerfed a bunch of times during testing, so it was even worse. Okay, I was we, not exactly looking for that, first but it worked, so... A little surprise. Yeah. Let's see if what it activated, if it activated something. Here we go. Oh, okay. What is this? Oh, I didn't see that. This. Is yeah, we're gonna change the platforms just slightly because yeah. they are a little bit too easy to miss. Legibility. Oh. Definitely. That's one of the biggest things I learned was uh, how to make a game look good. Because a game, I'm used to use, usually doing like paintings, which are very different. I sort of approached it as a painting at first, and that does not work. So <laughs> there was a lot of back and forth with how to make tiles visible and how to separate layers out so that they don't get lost and things yeah. like that. And I mean, the. People can't hear it right now because we are talking, right? So the, the music is not um, in focus right now, but the music is also very good. Like, it's not overwhelming. Uh, it's kind of, like, solitary and, and, and simple, like, ambient song, but it does its job. Uh, at least I think so. Was it any of you who did this, or was it that you found help outside of the development team? How did you do the music? So the, the our audio engineer is the the same one that worked with uh, with me uh, for other projects, um, and he, he's been working with us since the beginning of the project. Uh, the audio for the game is not uh, just a, an environment track. So uh, depending on what are you doing and the situation that you put yourself in, uh, new tracks uh, start to play together. Mm -hmm. Basically, yeah. we have a, an adaptive soundtrack. Exploring. So yeah, as you go for um, 
uh, more intense sections like compact section, uh, sections or, or go, for example, for a puzzle section, the music uh, <clears throat> overall tuned goes up and down to accommodate the, what, what is supposed that, that you are doing in the moment. Mm. So, okay, one thing I learned with the, these flies is you gotta move. Oh no. Mm. I see. <laughs> Yeah, you kill one, you got to kill them all. Yeah, basically, yeah. Yes, please give me just a little bit of space if I can get it there. Come on, come on. Hmm. Maybe? Uh, squeeze through, yes. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, what am I? Okay. It truly is labyrinthine. Labyrinth. Okay, good. So on this, Whoop. you you can see your progress on the on. Oh yeah, the I have map. a map. I forget all the time. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> I was yeah. killed by a bee. <laughs> I forgot to mention that. Don't worry. <laughs> Everyone, if you if you want to, you can also leave some questions in chat, and we will get to it afterwards. Oh wait, there's a menu here. I did not know. Okay, let's check what is this. Does it have anything to do with like upgrades or other things? Yeah, so the menu currently has three tabs on it. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that you're on there shows Orbo. It actually shows the old version of Orbo. We had a version one uh, and he's since been redesigned. So we've got to update the UI for the next build. Um, but yeah, it shows which uh, power-ups you have locked. So it shows at the moment you've got the dash, dash and you've got the night vision okay good good so when we've developed the ui a little more when you have one of those um power up selected it'll pop out a small video window that will show like a, a small like two second clip of, of the what the actual skill does okay, good. so as, as we say there isn't any text for us to explain so mm -hmm. it's all going to be visual so we'll have little uh, like icon videos that'll show you exactly what the highlighted skill does so you know what you've got. Uh, there's also tabs coming for um, like the map you've seen mm -hmm. and statistics. So how many times you've died, which also appears when you die. There's a small counter that ticks up that yeah, shows yeah. how many different orbos you've had. Um, and there's also going to be a story log tab. We haven't implemented that system yet, but uh, we're going to have four panel comic books that you find throughout the spaceship. Um, and they're all animated and they show a little bit of lore, a little bit of history of what's mm -hmm. going on, why the spaceship exists, what's on board, that sort of thing. Um, so it'll give the player a nice introduction to the world that we've built. It's not just uh, artwork. It's actually got reason for being there. Um, and you'll find this throughout the ship. And you can view it inside the menu there. So you'll have like a little comic book viewer that you can open and look through. Nice. Ooh, that was smooth. Yeah, <laughs> I was sweating there for a bit, but <laughs> I was able to pull it off. Good. Oh, no. Okay, good, good. Come in, come in. Uh -huh. hmm. I really like the secondary animation on, on Oirbo. Like the, 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 the ear flaps. Like the, the, the eye openings. Okay, that's good. Okay. Oh. Yeah, we spent a lot of time developing Orbo himself. As I say, this is the second version of him. The first version was a lot different. He was still a cube-shaped robot, but yeah, the colors were different, all the panels were different, that sort of thing. And when we upgraded, we also changed over from, as I say, the sprite-based to the bone-based animation. And that let us get really high fidelity animations. So yeah, like those ears moving and the eyes blinking. We can stack animators on top of each other, so we can have like flips and things like that when he double jumps. And they're really fun to show. Oh yeah, you're going to be to have a double jump function, right? Almost, I was there. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we're gonna have a double jump, um, a dash, a wall slide, so you'll be able to stick to walls and jump up them. Yeah. Um, 
There's also a really cool ability which we're sort of developing now and in the next area we're building called the Gravity Flip. Um, and as you can see right now, all the ceilings are the same tiles as the floors. So that means that eventually when you get that power up, you're going to be able to walk on the ceilings throughout the game. Nice. Um, we don't know yet if it's going to be a timer-based thing or whether it's going to be like you just turn it on and that's it, the game's upside down. Mm -hmm. But it's really fun to play with. Okay, so... Oh, good. I'm, at least I'm getting good at that, at windsurfing. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Uh, at the moment, you are only developing for PC, right? Uh, mm, oh, oh. Yes, the, the goal is to launch on PC first. Uh, but the game, as you probably saw with the, the UI and the, the menus, is totally ready to go for consoles. And uh, the Switch and Xbox are, are our goals for right now because we have access to them. And Hopefully, hopefully soon after we release the game on the on PC on the Steam and other uh, PC stores. Hopefully, we were able to port the game to to Nintendo Switch and mm -hmm. uh, to Xbox. So awesome. It's the goal for now. I know and someone we'll in the chat who will be very very happy with that. It's been a constant all throughout uh, our uh, showcases. He's been asking for every single game he sees in this in, in our showcases. He asks for the Switch version, so I I think he'll be very happy. Yeah, yeah we developed it knowing that it's going to the Switch. Yeah, it's, okay. it's like the ideal console. Yeah, Switch was uh, revealed itself to be a like an indie machine, let's say. Yeah, definitely. So basically, my mission right now is to not kill a single one of these. <laughs> that would be a good shot. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can do it. That's good. Like, yeah, you 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 make the the um, the player learn. Like, that aggression is not always a solution, right? Yeah. That that there's some enemies that should be avoided. And everything becomes easier. <laughs> they just make your life easier. I like this little guy in the background Indeed. here. Real nice. Yeah, there's the queen bee. Yeah. Sort of being harvested for its honey. We teach uh, that even stronger in the next area. Oh no. Don't worry. In the next area, the medical bay is like the hospital for the for the spaceship. Mm -hmm. And there's an enemy there that we call the anesthesiologist. And uh, that's definitely one that you do not want to get tangled with. <laughs> Um, if you've got full health, as you do now, yeah. he won't touch you, he'll just leave you alone, he'll give you a little wave, say hello, how you doing, and then carry on patrolling. But if you're at anything less than 100% health, he will chase you and try and help, kind of help you. Um, <laughs> and you'll wake up in a random hospital bed somewhere very far away from oh, where you were. That's very... You'll be fully healed. Yeah. You'll have full health again, but you probably won't know where you are for a little while. Yeah, that's very, 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 uh, and I hope I get this right. Uh, like that's very bloodborne from the Yahargul, the prison guys. Yeah. Who, who just yeah, you yeah. Went, if you die, you get nabbed. That's amazing. I love that because the first time that happened to me mm -hmm. in Bloodborne, I was playing blind, so I was like, oh, okay, I died. Okay, what? Then a cutscene starts playing, and I'm in the middle of a place which is super high level. And there's enemies screaming everywhere, and there's a huge choir. And I'm like, "Oh no, what what is happening?" So yeah, that's that's amazing. That's a good surprise. Yeah. That's something to to give the players to to keep them guessing. Like there there can be anything around the corner, even things that you don't. Mm, okay, I put myself in a pickle. Even things <laughs> that you don't exactly expect. Oh, that's good. AI is good. I love you. Thank you. Yeah, even things that you don't expect. Yeah, there's because... different ways to use. Okay, let's check this out. Uh, I think we're all... Yeah, there's different ways to use that AI as well. So, uh, the, not the AI, the mechanic for the anesthesiologist. Uh, you'll be taught right to start, you know, don't get caught by this person. Uh, they will transport you somewhere you don't know, but that might not always be a bad thing. You might end up somewhere that you didn't expect to be able to get in the first place. So, yeah. sometimes it might work out. Nice. Good, good, good. I think we're almost out of time. 
So I'm just going to attempt this whole beehive section once more, and then we can just check. Try and go as fast as you can. Like dash, spam dash as much as you can. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> see? It's a bad advice. <laughs> yeah, when you try to go fast. Yeah, so instead is the best way to go from yeah. to here. Oirbo, Oirbo isn't Sonic. Give me the, give me the good stuff. Okay, I see you, I see you. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. Oopsie daisy. Yeah, this is the beehive. So there's lots of bees and flowers and things like that. And the decoration should hopefully sort of sell that yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to change this tile set a little bit. So it's make a it little yellow bit more, just yeah. to really pop out. Yeah, you see the honey or honey-like substance here. Mm -hmm. So you, you said that it's quite the the art style is quite cute, right? And it's uh, not 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 an extremely like aggressive thing. But uh, are you planning on having any like uh, more like horror team things or some stuff like that or um, like some some places that are very tense and, and scary or is it or are you gonna try to oh yes are you gonna try to keep the um, the the aesthetic more like family friendly and, and like that I think I want to toe the line just a little bit yeah definitely stay family friendly that's just the way this worked out mm -hmm. um, I personally, I like more like horror themes and gore and mutations and things like that. So, um, but yeah, there are some enemies that are quite creepy. So the boss for this area, for example, is like tangled in a load of vines and he throws seeds at you and he's quite creepy. Nice. The anesthesiologist we were talking about is very creepily designed. <laughs> but I think the sort of creepy where you're not necessarily scared by it but you like that doesn't look quite right yeah that, that so that's not, not that's too... not okay yeah you're going <laughs> yeah okay so yeah it's going to remain sort of quite hard sci-fi um cute sci-fi okay. but not uh yeah not too sort of family friendly all the time <laughs> nice i think i'm almost there almost there yeah yeah there you go Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, you're fast. Okay. Ooh, good. Hmm. Ooh. There you that, go. That was tense. That's that music system. Yeah, coming into play, just exactly. sort of calms down as you know you say. For a bit. <laughs> well, I think we're almost. Yeah, yeah, we're almost out of time. I'm just gonna leave and let's take a look at the beautiful shot. See what we've got going on around here. Hey, we got some puns. We've got a scythe for sore eyes from Gonzalo Lopes. <laughs> João Machado saying go 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 let's go okay good good I think we're almost done so we've talked a bit about the inspirations for a game the idea you guys meeting up everything what if you had a message to give to your audience right now uh, what would it be to, to the players to anyone that's watching right now it can be about anything so I think you can use these final moments of the stream to, to leave your mark on the stream Yeah, so I think Diogo might be a bit nervous about that because <laughs> he doesn't like talking too much, but um, I can talk. Um, yeah, we just really want people to check us out. Come join us on Discord, have a chat with us. Um, we're just two regular dudes who are making a video game, so we want to talk about it as much as possible. So our Discord is on our Twitter. I'm sure you can find the links through um, this chat. Yes. Um, yeah, come check us out. If you find anything that you think that game would be awesome if it had, whatever, we'd love to know. We really want to make this the best it can be. Um, so yeah, we just we just want to chat with you guys and, uh, and hear more of your opinions and thoughts. Awesome, man. 
Guys, thank you very much for giving us a piece of your time and showing us this nice game and talking about it, discussing what the development, what are your goals, what are your aspirations. Uh, we really, we really at Indie X. That's that's what we are all about. We're about trying to show everyone that we have amazing indies. And if if you want, this video will be up on Rubber Shika TV's channel later on. Uh, but of course, we're going to have uh, plenty more streams throughout the week. Tomorrow we have another two streams, and then we're gonna get into the the final Indie X days. We're going to be streaming all throughout the day, see, from the morning till 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 the end of the day, with some talks and some some, but mostly indie games. But once again, guys, uh, I thank you very much. Oerbo is looking really nice. I hope you can get a lot of support, and that's also part of the reason why I'm here. Uh, and I hope you have a lot of success. And thank you once again, guys, for showing up and showing us your game, taking a bit of your time. Uh, and thank you very much for showing up, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thanks thank for you. having us. It's been really fun chatting and, uh, and taking part. Yeah, man. Thank you very yeah, much thanks. once again, guys. Uh, and everyone in the chat, thank you as well for being there and commenting and asking questions. And, well, everyone, have a good night.